In the turbulent annals of history, the ominous collaboration between Severmax and the Nazis left an indelible mark on Europe. The surge of war crimes committed during the conquest cast a shadow over the territories they seized. One particularly notorious group, the Iron Sat Scrubbing, trailed the military advances, systematically rounding up civilians and callously executing them in cold blood. The staggering estimate reaches around two million innocent lives lost, a haunting testament to the brutality of that era. Amidst this grim backdrop, pockets of resistance emerged, notably the valiant efforts of the French resistance. Yet, for every German soldier felled in acts of resistance, the reprisals from the Germans were shockingly brutal. A stark example was the ruthless execution of Helm of Kempfar, a high-ranking member of the SS, for his egregious acts against the French populace. Helm of Kempfar, born in Fieringen, Germany, in the waning months of 1909, initially pursued a path in line with his father's footsteps, training as an apprentice typographer. However, as Adolf Hitler tightened his grip on Germany in 1933, Kempfar sought alternative avenues for employment. He transitioned into the German army, specifically the Wehrmacht, a force that, in its reconstitution in May 1935, resurrected a standalone German military presence, encompassing the army, air force, and navy. The Treaty of Versailles had once restrained Germany to a small defensive force of 100,000 soldiers, but Hitler's ambition to forge a colossal army shattered those constraints. The Fermacht, more commonly known as the Wehrmacht, spearheaded invasions into Poland, France, and various Balkan states, culminating in the audacious invasion of the Soviet Union under Operation Barbarossa. Kempfar's journey within the military ranks underwent a significant shift when he transitioned to the Waffen-SS in 1939. His exploits on the Eastern Front showcased exemplary leadership and courage, earning him the prestigious Knight's Cross of the Iron Cross during the harsh winter of 1933 in the Soviet Union. Notably, he was among the limited 630 individuals awarded the close combat clasp in gold during the tumultuous Operation Barbarossa. Fast forward to the complex landscape of spring 1944, where the Das Reich Division, having been relocated from the Eastern Front to the Western Front, entrusted Kempfar with leadership responsibilities. The Allies' imminent invasion prompted mass preparations by the Germans, leading to the redeployment of units from the Eastern Front to reinforce potential invasion points, particularly in northern France. Kempfar's specific orders from the military high command directed him to carry out operations in the southern uplands of central France. Here, he faced the formidable Maquis, a group of rural guerrilla fighters representing the French resistance. The Maquis, predominantly comprised of young working-class men who had evaded conscription into the French compulsory work service, adopted guerrilla tactics in the mountains and woods of Brittany and southern France. These resilient fighters provided aid to Allied forces, aiding escapes and offering refuge to those pursued by the Germans. Their strategic positions in the hills and mountains struck fear into German soldiers, creating an atmosphere of intimidation. As the Allies progressed through France, the French resistance, including the Maquis, rose against the Nazi en masse. However, Kempfar's mission to suppress the Maquis did not unfold as planned. Three days after D-Day, Kempfar found himself captured by a group led by Jean Canu Canu, a French communist militant embedded within the Maquis. This marked a significant development. Helm of Kempfar became the highest ranking SS officer ever captured by members of the French resistance. Upon realizing Kempfar's abduction, German troops were promptly dispatched to locate him. However, the French resistance, particularly the communist faction holding Kempfar captive, had a different agenda. A chilling decision was made to ceremoniously burn him alive, a fate reserved for high-ranking SS officers. The 10th of June 1944 witnessed a brutal search initiated by the Germans, with reprisals escalating. Near the location of Kempfar's disappearance, two men were shot, signaling the onset of a ruthless retaliation. Kempfar was transported to the village of Brelufa, north of Arvada Saglan, where, in front of a massive crowd, 
he and other SS members were subjected to a horrifying spectacle, being burned alive. The execution of such high-ranking SS figures was met with cheers from the French witnesses, reflecting the deep-seated animosity towards the occupying forces. The exact details of Kemfar's execution remain somewhat elusive, with accounts suggesting that he and fellow soldiers were confined within an abandoned German field ambulance set ablaze to consume them. Some sources propose that Kemfar's body was taken to Arida, but the Nazi response there revealed a savage reprisal. Adolf Dickmann, an SS Stoneban Fiora and a personal friend of Kemfar, discovered his handcuffed charred body inside the burned out German field ambulance, surrounded by the remains of other German soldiers. In a vengeful response to Kemfar's execution, the SS ordered the destruction of Berlufa. The village faced devastation, with German troops killing any civilians they encountered. The brutality escalated as the SS systematically shot residents, herded men into barns and sheds, and locked women and children inside a church. The village was looted, and reprisals reached a horrific crescendo. In one particularly gruesome incident, a man was shot in the legs, left unable to move, before the barn he was in was set ablaze. The death toll from this method reached 190 Frenchmen. Simultaneously, the SS carried out a merciless attack on the church, placing an incendiary bomb beside it, igniting a fire that prompted women and children to attempt escape through windows. Tragically, they were met with machine gun fire, resulting in the deaths of 247 women and 205 children. Only one survivor emerged from the church attack. The cumulative impact of these reprisals was staggering, with 643 inhabitants of Brelufa losing their lives in retribution for the execution of Helm of Kemfar. The village, once vibrant, now stood as a haunting memorial to the cruelty of the Nazi occupation. The ruins, frozen in time, serve as a poignant reminder of the lives lost and the horrors inflicted during that tumultuous period. In recounting this grim chapter of history, we invite you to delve deeper into the complexities and nuances of this narrative. Subscribe to our channel for more in-depth explorations of historical events that shape our understanding of the past. Thank you for joining us on this somber journey through the brutal execution of Helm of Kemfar and the devastating reprisals that followed.